throngs of the media. Uh, this is our 12th spring practice, uh, so excited to get this one started. And uh, our goal is always trying to get uh, a little bit better, I think, as a, as a group through, through improving every individual. Um, just a couple percent at a time, and, uh, and we'll keep working. We've got a lot of young players coming back, so we're excited about it. I think we lose, um, I think we lose three starters out of the, um, the top uh, 22, and maybe four out of the top 44 players. So looking forward to that, and I'll just take some questions. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm concerned with who's, who is on the roster. We've got a lot of guys coming back, and uh, you know, we've had some attrition. I understand that. Um, but uh, you know, we, you know, there's there's reasons for that. We got to work through those. Experienced youth coming back. These guys kind of know the drill a little bit when it comes to this off-season workout. And yeah, I think that they, that we do. Um, you know, we've got more players coming back. We've got a large group uh, for spring practice. You know, we really only lost 13 players last year. We actually signed 21. So do the math. Um, but um, you know, we've got seven brand new guys out here. You know, brand new freshmen out here that came in at mid-year. So be exciting to watch, watch guys like Theo Day and Xavier Henderson and Kalen Irvin and um, Demetrius Douglas had an Achilles issue, so he'll be out. But um, some of these younger players will be exciting to watch. Them. You guys aren't on the roster. Assume that they're I'm not sorry. The guys that aren't on the roster. Is it safe to they no, just got no. They just uh, had to make a decision as of today, and so as of today, they're not out here. So we made that decision. Mark, can you talk about the difference of coming off a three and nine season and coming off a ten and nine season, and maybe what you see from these guys? I mean, after the three and nine, they had to earn things, and now they have a little momentum coming in. Yeah, you know, I hope we always feel like we have to earn things around here. You know, uh, you know, last year we we sort of regathered ourselves and uh, you know went at, went at things one thing at a time, and that's what we've got to do. We've got, you know, we had our best semester academically. Um, I think in the history of Michigan State football uh, last uh, last fall, so that was a positive as well. So uh, we just got to continue to try and do things right on the field, off the field, in the classroom, and uh, you know that's what we're going to do. Looking at this year versus last year, some of those guys have been lost this year. It's an area of proven depth, I guess. Yeah. How, how much does that depth? Well, we played. Yeah, you know, we, we lost uh, Demetrius Cooper, obviously, and, and uh, but you know we've got defensive ends coming back. Uh, Chris Fry we lost the linebacker. We've got guys coming back at that position. As well, Tyreek Thompson has played. Brandon Randall has played. Uh, and then uh, when you look at the uh, at the at the, the running back situation, Gerald, we lost Gerald. But then uh, you know, yeah, yeah, Madre. So, but uh, we've got guys going. You know, obviously, I think probably the biggest loss is our center. We got to find a, a, a proven center. Uh, so we're young at that position, but we've got talented guys. You know, Connor Hayward, Connor Hayward's, um, you know, Western Bridges will bounce back, you know, after his injury. I think he's, you know, he may not participate this spring, but he looks good, looks like he's ready to go, um, you know, this fall. And then, uh, you know, the two guys coming in, you know, I think that Elijah Collins and Darius Jefferson are two guys who are going to get looks right away. And that's why we recruited two of them, because we felt like this may happen, you know. And, uh, you know, guys want to play. Guys transfer, they, they, they just want to play. It's nothing. It's nothing personal about it. Uh, they just want to play a little bit more than they're playing. That's usually the case. You know, we've got a lot of good young players, and it's you know we've got a lot of players returning that are starting Mark, wide receiver Mark, position, especially. Mark Ryan, Brian Lorkey, obviously there's uh, the experience there is lacking. How important is this spring for guys like Rocky and even Theo being here early? Yeah, I think it's going to be real interesting to watch, watch uh, Rocky, and then also Theo Day. Uh, but uh, Brian Lorkey is a proven commodity, and uh, what he did last year at Tremendous, I think, sophomore season, and you know he's got to take that and build on that. Whoops, build on that going forward. A lot of people in here. Three off-season addition. Some of the, the sexual assault stuff when it first came out. The sexual assault culture on campus. Do you have anything you wanted to add or say further about that? You know, only only that I want to um, commit to be a part of the solution. You know, I made my statement on how I feel about things, but uh, you know, hopefully. Uh, um, we're healing as a community and healing as a university, and it's a step-by-step -step process. And you know, a lot of times springs the time for a new beginning. So you know, I'll use that in that in this case as well. You know, it's an opportunity to grow and to, and to get better at everything that we're doing and, uh, and looking at. And, uh, you know, I think uh, John English done a great job thus far in, in terms of um, organizationally, in terms of uh, I guess uh, confronting the issue. I have not had a chance to talk to Brian. I'm going to wait until he gets to the combine there, but I've seen him, um, you know, a month ago or so. I saw him, and, uh, you know, again, we've had a, 
I think we've had an Allen on our team since 2011. We still got them. And same with the Bullas. We still got Bullas. They've been on since 2010. We added a coach that maybe will be here longer. So uh, we can ensure that. It's, it's staff changes. Can you talk about those a little bit? Just yeah, you know what? We, we've got, we added a 10th coach. So Coach Treadwell comes back uh, as a 10th coach. He's got, uh, you know, uh, I guess four years here, three years with me at, uh, at Cincinnati. But so he's very familiar with Michigan State. This is actually his third time on staff here. Came here in 1999 as well, or 2000. Uh, and then uh, Paul Haynes, you know, has been here in the past. Proven coach, proven head, another proven, proven coach with great experience. And they've also been head coaches, both Treadwell and Haynes. So they, they got a big picture view of things. And then Chuck Bulla played here. So I think what we've done is we've brought people back that's got a history at Michigan State. So at least their transition here at least they know the fight song. That's what I can guarantee. You. Mark, how do you, I guess, handle the, talking to your kids about the off-field campus stuff? How, what's your message been to them? You know, be respectful of the process. Um, make sure that we respect respect women, obviously. Um, make sure that we have no incidents and that we have to be very careful everywhere we go and, and uh, understand that this is a process. They know their expectations there. They know the guidelines and the rules, and, and we're going to follow those and stay within those. How surprised were you when Collins departure and the way that You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to stay the course here with with spring ball right now. You know, it's an emotional day for all of us. Joe, Joe Eddie. Out I'm sorry. Anybody else going to sit out this spring? Or? We got some guys that are injured, but I don't want to talk about injuries right now. But um, you know, and then we've got a couple. You know, guys that may not participate this spring. Joe Bocci had a pretty big year last year. Showed why you were confident in the last spring. What, what's the next step for him? I think build on things. You know, in terms of knowledge. You know, he was a young player last year, uh, very dynamic player. Uh, he's got leadership skills, and I think he can build on that leadership skill. Same kind of thing for for Brian, just being you know redshirt sophomore last year at the you know 3,300 yards of offense. He looks like you he... know I think he was proving himself last year and gaining leadership as he went through it. And I think he's now assumed that, that responsibility a little bit more and be a little bit more confident. But he's cool. I mean, he's very cool under center in, in the game. And no, no situation is too big for him. So. Mark, what about the opportunity for Rocky Lombardi to get those, I would assume, number two reps, get a lot of them this spring? Yeah, Rocky's an exciting player. Um, he, was, he was exciting last year. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, he's another commodity uh, for this program. He's a proven winner um, from high school. He's tough. He's big. He's raw. He's athletic. Um, and um, you know, I'll be very excited to watch him this spring. Opportunities of linebacker also, Brandon Randall, is he linebacker, defensive end? What, what are you going to look at with him this spring? Yeah, we're going to work Brandon at linebacker. I think he's got a, a great amount of ability, but he's got to be consistent in what he's doing. I mean, that's the biggest thing, consistency and performance. Mark, just to be clear, those players that aren't participating, are they going to have a chance to work themselves back? Is that still out there for them? Uh, just to be clear, we'll see. <laughs> Brandon Randall. Yeah, I, you know, we've got to make some decisions yet. Yeah. Star or Sam with Brandon Randall? That's It'll be a money backer. Sam. Yeah. Okay. i got to go, guys. So. Thanks a lot. Thanks.